esta conferencia uh, de el invierno es la 35 ava conferencia del invierno de NOFA, Massachusetts. Welcome to the 35th annual winter conference of NOFA, Mass. Um, our um, presentation today is going to be in Spanish. Nuestra presentación hoy va a ser en español. Uh, but we have uh, very good interpreters uh, to do this uh, for folks in English. Y tenemos muy buenas intérpretes hoy para hacer esto en inglés. Um, so I'm going to start with some slides to figure out interpreting, and then we get started. Les voy a dar um, unos slides para que aprendan conmigo a uh, cómo usar la función de interpretación y de ahí empezamos. Um, so, la reunión de hoy es trabajadores dueños de granjas co cooperativas con José Martínez y Lenin Torres. Uh, so today our workshop is called Worker Owned Cooperatives with Jose Martinez and Lenin Torres. Um, so we will. Um, we will start. Uh, Okay, uh, Cristina. Para acceder a la interpretación por computador, mmm, tienen que encontrar el globo que está debajo. Aún ese globo no lo van a ver. Solo cuando está activado um, van a ver el globo eh, terrestre y van a encontrar eh, la selección de inglés o español. Tienen que seleccionar uno de los dos idiomas. Si están en el teléfono inteligente, eh, van a ir a los tres puntitos horizontales en, en la parte de abajo derecha de su, de su pantalla y van a seleccionar interpretación de idiomas. Y luego van a seleccionar el idioma de preferencias, eh, español o inglés, y después finalizar. Access interpretation. Um, we have not enabled it yet, but in a moment on your computer, if you're on a computer, a globe will appear. You would click on the interpretation button globe and then select your preferred language that you would like to listen in. If you've tuned in on a smartphone, then there should be three horizontal dots. You would click on those dots and then or click on more and then select language interpretation and then click your preferred language that you want to listen in and then click done. So I will activate the um, interpretation now. You're gonna see it in a couple minutes. Van a verlo en un par de minutos. Um, la aplicación. Um, Ya está activada y la pueden ver. Interpretation has been activated. You can see it now on your screen. Can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear the interpretation? You can just show your thumb or use the icon to show thumbs up if you're hearing in English. Perfect. Language justice practices. Our movements are multilingual. It takes everyone's commitment to create multilingual spaces together.
Comments in the chat will be live translated. If you can, please rate your comments in English and Spanish so that we can all easily access them. Low down, speak at a moderate pace. We'll use this signal if you're speaking too fast to ask you to slow down. Speak up, speak loud and clear. If we can't hear you, we're going to use this signal to ask you to speak louder, to raise your voice. One mic. We're only able to interpret for one person at a time. Even though our interpreters are really smart, they can only speak one for one person at a time. Gender inclusivity. In Spanish, we're going to use the letter E to be inclusive of gender instead of O or A. If you have any issues with interpretation, please let us know immediately. Don't suffer in silence. Write a message in the chat. At NOFA, Massachusetts, our commitment to racial equity and justice. We're working to deepen our commitment to racial equity and justice, including honest work to examine whiteness and dismantle systems of white supremacy that are part of many dominant systems, including our food systems. The foundation of modern organic old agriculture is rooted in the long-standing cultural practices of BIPOC communities. We recognize that the United States was built on stolen land and that the food system was built on the stolen labor of Black, Indigenous, Latinx, Asian, and other people of color. Please take a moment to find your location. On this map, on the world, the world indigenous map. Racial equity in action. We'll have a meeting for people of color, BIPOC, to come together on Sunday, January 16th at one in the afternoon. This is a space for people of color to be together, to celebrate and talk about sustaining our communities, healing, how to heal from racial trauma and to work together to organize collectively for systemic change. For Spanish speakers, we'll have a room in Spanish. This will also be tomorrow, the 16th, from 5.30 to 6.30. For our white allies and co-conspirators, here are some ways to center racial equity in your own work and support BIPOC communities. Share resources, including land, money, and tools, and other resources with BIPOC organizations, such as the Urban Farming Institute, Gardening the Community, the African Alliance, and the Native American Rights Fund, Indigenous Peoples Network, and Pacasset Ponkanoket Land Trust. Support legislation that begins to talk about and advance work towards reparations and protect the rights of farm and food workers. 
Now, we'll talk about etiquette in our session. This account is set to mute participants upon entry. To speak, simply press the mic button at the bottom of your screen. Please mute yourself when you're done speaking to avoid background noise interfering with other speakers. Hosts may do this for you if, as needed. Feel free to use the chat feature to comment at any point during the workshop. The host will check the chat periodically during the session and the presenter will leave time at the end to address questions in the chat. Please note the session is being recorded. We'd like to thank all of our sponsors, our gold sponsors. Without them, our conference of today would not be possible. We also like to give thanks to our silver sponsors. Without them, we wouldn't have the possibility of offering uh, stipends to people who otherwise could not participate. Also, we'd like to give you an incentive to participate in our online auction, which will also help with our um, auction funds. We'll share the link for the auction in the chat. Also, we'd love to, like to give thanks to our virtual vendors. You can visit their pages through our conference booklet. And you can find special discounts. And you can watch some live videos from them in our program. Thank you for your attention. And now we'll get started with our session. I'd like to welcome Jose and Lenin. Jose is with a worker owned farm called Riquezas del Campo, and Lenin works for the Pioneer Valley Worker Center. Welcome, everyone. I'm pleased to be invited to this 35th anniversary. My name is Jose Martinez, and together with my comrade Lenin Torres, I'll pass it over to him for him to introduce himself. We'll be talking a little bit about the experience that of the cooperative that we're part of, that I'm part of, and we hope that we all learn something today, or at least that you have fun and you get to know new people. It's a pleasure to be with you. Lennon, over to you to present yourself. Thank you, Jose. For me, it's a pleasure to be with all of you. It's my first time participating in a conference like this. It's something new for me. I'm happy to be here. And as Riquezas del Campo and the mutual aid program are interlinked and are supporting each other. And so wonderful to be with you. And I'll pass it over to Jose to talk about a little bit what he's doing about mutual aid and how the Pioneer Valley Worker Center is organized. Okay. Um, and Lenny, eh, si me puedes dar eh, cinco minutos eh, introduciendo un poco el, eh, lo del centro obrero. Tengo... Lenny, if you can give me five minutes. Sí, claro. Este, bueno, yo he estado trabajando con el centro obrero oh. desde el. Uh, and can you explain a little bit about the Worker Center? Center. I've been working uh, since 1991 in the Worker Center and the mutual aid programs in this region and area of the country. Uh, the mutual aid program 
has grown considerably after 2020, after the pandemic. We have been receiving a lot of vegetables from um, Riqueza del Campo, richness from, from the field, from the farms. Uh, our communities need these quite a bit. And we've been working together for quite a while and we've seen the growth from of the co-op. We as organizations try to support the cooperatives. Um, because co-ops support support um, workers who want to develop their cooperative businesses uh, so that they can own their own business and be their own bosses. And Riquezas del Campo is one of those co-ops who has been able to support um, this this initiative quite a bit, support cooperative development. Just thinking about all the work that we've been doing, it really raises my hair and it just how much we've been able to accomplish with the workshops and the trainings um, that the Workers' Center has offered so that co-op workers could be educated and learned about and learn about finances, financials, um, and many other things that don't come to mind right now, but a lot of trainings, a lot of workshops. I would like now if Jose could speak a little bit more of what um, his group has been doing with Riqueza del Campo. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, colleague and comp compa Lenin. Comrade. Uh, this is the first image of autumn and of the fall in our um, farm um, when we were doing cover crop. Let, let me know when to change slides. So we will start to say that part of the mission of the farm, the, the, the name of our co-op is Riqueza del Campo, richness of the farm in the north e northwest of Massachusetts, in, in Springfield, Massachusetts, where basketball was invented. Um, so if you are nearby, just come and visit the farm and learn a bit of, about Springfield. And we um, have um, dignity work and um, based on solidarity, um, dem democ democ democratic decision making, and um, preserving ecology, um, and gives us the opportunity to be the owners of our own our own business with foods and and vegetables that are nutritious and healthy, and uh, we can practice sustainable agriculture to improve our well-being and our live our lifestyle. Um, so now we are worker owners and um, the farm is like a community space where we can get together and um, to preserve our traditions and grow our crops. And we create workshops and events with the worker center in collaboration with the worker center. 
The farm um, helps as a platform also where people from different origins can connect and learn together for a more just world in collaboration with our sister organization, as I mentioned earlier, the Worker Center. Should I stop here or should I leave the questions to, for the end? Uh, it's up to you. So maybe it's better to leave the questions until the end. But if you have a pressing need for uh, asking a question right now, feel free to raise your hand and we will answer the question here at, um, at the moment. So who are we? So it's a cooperative farm. Well, the majority of the worker members are immigrants. Um, we have wonderful people with beautiful hearts um, who have um, been born with a different skin color, but, but they have the same dreams and we don't discriminate anybody here. The, the dreams and the Um, the concerns that some white members might have, we really emphasize um, equi equity, racial equity and justice and no discrimination. And, and, and we're also working not to discriminate people of color and also um, white people. So we are working on organic agriculture, but we don't have the organic certification, but we do follow all the protocol, protocols um, that are needed for an organic farm. We will eventually achieve that, that organic um, uh, label or, and status. I want to tell you a little bit about what is, it's, it's an organic farm, but it's not official just because it's not been formally um, certified, but um, what is the difference between this unofficial organic farm with an official certified farm? And that's what I'm going to talk about. Some comrades who have been talking and working about organic and organic farms that have been certified, they're looking for maximizing um, the um, efficiencies and and might not be looking out so much for the soil. Um, we are in a reserve area. Uh, for us, we're very happy to share with the community in general. We have a lot of volunteers. We have guests, visits, new people coming and learning. And, and, and sometimes they didn't even know that they loved agriculture and opportunity for kids uh, as who never had that experience as kids to grow food and enjoy uh, planting and growing their crops. So when they end up in love with, with us and with the process. So when did um, Riquezas del Campo start? It's a difficult question, a little bit of a difficult question to answer. It started very informally at the, begin, at the beginning and 
2018, three years ago, but officially we established ourselves in 2019. And, and now we are starting our fourth season, agricultural season, as one of our many dreams and, and hopes and desires for, of, of a lot of people with a big, big heart that when coming together in the same path started to create grandiose and wonderful things. It includes a wonderful help from the um, staff of the Worker Center who not only do their own work and their own job, but they give above and beyond 100% um, um, giving from their own very, the depths of their own hearts. As I was saying, the worker center um, was the center that incubated this cooperative our cooperative, and uh, we hope that it's the first one of many in this area, many to come. And Riquezas del Campo started with the conservation lands that have been offered, that were offered. Um, there were there were some there was some land um, that um, the owners were looking for someone to to work the land and 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 grow food and through the workers center um, people were recruited who people who had the need for or 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 were um, already. Um, comfortable with the practice of growing their own food. And, and, and the worker center having access and, and working directly with a large immigrant community um, who works in, in several areas and sectors like farms and restaurants. Um, so these, uh, this immigrant community and population uh, were able to be connected um, with the land um, through the worker center. Um, but it was just a project that nobody ever knew how far it was gonna go. And I wanna talk about now about the history of the farm. Among our priorities at Riquezas del Campo, is to empower and build power with immigrants who are farm workers. An idea is that we can be owners of our own business. That kind of idea for immigrants, as immigrants, that's often a very far away idea. It's not even in our minds that we could be our own bosses. And there's very limited options. For me, basically, I worked as a farm worker for many years, and that was the perspective of many of my comrades on the farms. So, so with farm workers who are interested in this idea that they could be their own bosses, they could be worker owners of their own business. And then, and our community has the need also to have healthy vegetables. And we know that the typical market for organic vegetables is very expensive. And so it really limits who has access to this organic food. So the benefits of growing organic vegetables are really important for our community. So at Riquezas del Campo, we want to create a healthy work environment. Many of us 
have worked for different bosses and we know that the treatment can be very different and there's a relationship that you're the boss i'm the worker and that can be really difficult so that's something that we want to break away from we want people to feel inspired we want people to enjoy and to know the benefits of living and being part of, through being part of a cooperative farm. And we can invite in whole families to work together on the farm. One second, excuse me. Well, at Riquezas del Campo, we have the benefit that it's not the only cooperative farm in the area. We have the benefit that's not the only cooperative in the area. And it was a dream of the work Pioneer Valley Worker Center to create a network of worker owned cooperatives in the area that would all be networked together and that would mutually support each other. So we're also part of that broader project. Well, well, right now I've been sharing a lot of positive news, right? But also I wanna tell you about some of the challenges of having of starting a cooperative there's hard work to be done and there's challenges that need to be worked through some of the initial challenges that the cooperative had has and will have is One was to empower um, immigrant farm workers to show them that they too have the ability of being bosses of their own business, owners of their own businesses, and that they don't have to be following the orders of bosses. And it's not a surprise to know that now, even in 2022, the benefits and conditions for workers, um, for many farm workers have not improved. There's constant mistreatment, um, psychological har abuse, harassment, physical abuse, where bosses permit and enable systems of abuse where workers themselves don't feel um, sure about themselves. Um, the work is very rudimentary, where each person is responsible for bringing their own tools to work. Each, each farm worker often has to buy their own work equipment and bring it to work. And the preparation and care of the land it, um, is often done without proper equipment, right? It's really starting from zero. So at the beginning of starting Riquezas del Campo, um, all that we had were was asadores. Um, uh, we just had shovels. We didn't have a latrine. We didn't have a, a outhouse. So we started with basically no tools. And so those are some of our challenges of how to start a co-op. And there was a variety of different work experience of members um, and a diversity of different educational background, diversity of work background, different levels among the members of Riquezas del Campo. 
And we always need ongoing education and capacity building for ourselves. And so we've been in a period of uh, learning a lot. We've been holding workshops. And we need to learn new skills constantly to build a cooperative together. And we're practically required to learn a little bit of everything, everything from finance or basic things about operating machinery, learning about sales, learning about the, taking care of the environment. So it's quite an extensive amount of learning. And if you ever have the interest in forming a cooperative, you'll learn quite a lot through the process. And you'll always learn something new. Another one of the challenges of the cooperative farm has been the difference from a conventional business that has a boss, an owner, where the workers are obliged to follow the orders of the owner. But uh, at a cooperative farm, as I mentioned earlier, we have worker owners. So it can also be a challenge because it's something new. None of us had a previous experience being worker owners in a cooperative setting. And to definitively be part of a cooperative and to have the experience of noticing that there's other people around you and you all have equal responsibilities and equal rights to weigh in and share your opinions. That's something really beautiful for us as people. And most of us, but there are constant challenges. There are daily challenges. We have the commitment to self-evaluate ourselves, recalling that we're integrating ourselves in a different type of work system where we're worker owners and where we're all, we all have an equal voice in making decisions together. And at this point, if there are any questions or something you'd like me to explain a little bit better, I'd love to know how it's going for you. I haven't seen questions in the chat, but if you, there are questions in the chat, I'll let you know. Perfect. Another challenge that I'd like to comment on is just like in any other business during the first years those are often the hardest years. For Riquezas del Campo, we haven't been an exception to that, but it's also been quite fun. We've enjoyed ourselves a lot. In terms of earnings, our earnings have been reduced. Um, we've put a lot of um, effort into really building up a strong cooperative structure. And definitively, it is a challenge because one way or another, all of us have expenses, we've, we have bills we need to pay, we have rent we need to pay. So all the worker owners, um, many of the worker owners also have a full-time job in addition to the work that they're doing for Riquez del Campo. So that's been a challenge for people who've thought about joining a cooperative because we always need to be conscious 
that it's a it requires a lot of effort but we're also enjoying ourselves along this path without a doubt in a cooperative you could enjoy being with the people that are in it with you we've got a question from the chat first one says if riquezas is officially organized as a cooperative and you have written guidelines for worker owners. Yes, Riquezas del Campo, officially, we became a cooperative farm officially in 2019 with the assistance of the Pioneer Valley Worker Center. We were able to um, sign all the requirements on a uh, document as necessary. And with respect to is everyone um, worker owners, in addition to the worker owners, we also have aspiring worker owners or what we call aspirantes, and we also have volunteers. So everyone involved often starts by donating their time and the worker center helps us identify volunteers and um, then so we have some volunteers that become um, aspiring worker owners and who are just wrapping up all the documentation, all the all the paperwork. We're trying to make it a little bit clear about the path to becoming a worker owner. But um, in addition to the worker owners, we have the aspiring worker owners, we have volunteers. And anyone who would like to visit the farm is welcome anytime. We have another question. If you could talk a little bit more about how you are organized, and if you have somebody who's a manager, even though you're also your own, um, own bosses. Yes, of course. We've been in a constant process of training and capacity building with community support and university support, support of NOFA. We're trying to acquire improved ways of organizing. We're always um, open to learning and advice. This season, we had, at times there's some confusion when you have a lot of worker owners and you need to, it's time to make decisions. So that has been a bit of a challenge. And we've voted to have a, um, a head of the field and a secretary who's a worker or owner and a treasurer. We have a head of sales. We try to never leave them alone. We also have a sales manager that is um, supported by everyone. But um, uh, aside from management positions, we have to meet on a regular basis and have very good communication. We use WhatsApp groups uh, to stay on top of the communication um, at WhatsApp chat, messaging, and we just need to focus on uh, on the needs 
that the farm has and also the skills that people have um, to like divide the, the jobs and the tasks um, in, in one way that makes sense. Where is it that you sell your products? That is a good question. Initially, the, veg the veggies, the vegetables that the first families planted in, for the first season, um, they were planted for self-consumption, uh, but there was, but they planted more than, and they grew more and they harvested more than they needed. And then through the worker center started selling the, the, the harvest that that was left over. <laughs> um, many of many of the veggies are are used um, for weekly or biweekly. Um, and um, deliveries and we have uh, and pantries we have pantries we have a mobile market um a small mobile markets that where people can have uh, access to organic vegetables like like on wheels and at the end of the season we were able to open a little house or a little shed um, to cover, to, to um, store the, the veggies and be able to sell them from there. And when people go by, they just fell in love with it and they are just going and buying. It was just very beautiful. We are just, we're just um, creating different ways, developing different ways of how to reach people with the produce. I have purchased your produce at River Valley Co-op. Do you have special relationships with other co-ops? I think that at the moment we're open to establish relation, cooperative relationships, but we've been a little limited maybe because last year we had, we had a huge amount of projects to complete apart from the harvest. And um, we had a lot of infrastructure projects that we that um, had us meeting once and twice a week. Um, so it was a lot of work this past year. Um, but we've always been wanting to um, just establish contact and with other co-ops and always growing in that aspect and in that way. River Valley um, Co-op buys from us. And we also have work with the cooperative bank at the end of the year. Um, uh, at the end of the year, River Valley Co-op also placed our products in a Southampton um, store. And we're just uh, reaching out and expanding our cooperative reach. There are no more questions or comments. I don't know if Lenin wants to add anything. Um, everything that Jose has said is just very true. Um, these uh, 
people who are part of this co-op are part were part of a committee in Springfield who got together um, and, and just to develop this kind of pro, uh, programs um, where people would be able to develop their own businesses. Um, from from the, these committees is where the mutual aid uh, programs uh, were developed. And at the end of harvest, Um, at, uh, at the end of harvest and and out and and from the development of these committees, that's where mutual aid programs started in 2017. When it, it was a time when these kinds of food distributions started to um, and actually and 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 committees it's just to support these laborers and, and workers. Um, that's also a way how Riqueza del Campo was created with that desire of, of creating community programs. And when I started working in the organization, I started as a worker um, and, and just uh, looking and, and understanding what the mutual aid program was all about. I got more involved, started participating. And after the pandemic, we, we started receiving produce from Riqueza del Campo. And, and those produce many of the people who work uh, on the fields would have never been able to afford them. So this kind of distribution during the pandemic uh, and, and, and organic products um, that, again, um, wouldn't have been available otherwise because they're very expensive to buy. This was wonderful. Um, to be able to distribute distribute these organic foods and products to our community, our people, for um, healthier nutrition, and um, 200 families, I believe. And this has been a very good partnership and collaboration between Riqueza del Campo and the Workers' Center uh, with, with the mutual aid program. Um, um, the incubation happened through the Workers' Center, but now uh, Riqueza del Campo has a big structure. Uh, they've gone to all the trainings and workshops and they have uh, achieved a lot to where they are to at today. Uh, they've worked, they've grown. And in the farm, Riqueza del Campo, there is a community garden uh, that is um, uh, taken care of by people who are members of the committee. And we have, um, we, we share uh, what's happening um, in that space, we share what's happening in the worker center. That's a good space also to organize the community. And, and, and to tackle the things, the struggles that communities of color have to go through. Um, and, 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 and co-ops uh, structures really protect the rights of workers and are supporting those uh, rights. And we hope to continue working with Riqueza del Campo with a purchase of produce on an annual basis and um, supporting with a forward continues to support the communities that need 
um, the, the, these organic foods. There's a couple of questions. Has, uh, has your cooperative been connected? Um, have you been in touch with Tierra y Libertad, the farm worker owned co op in Washington State? Um, no. It's not the first time I hear about it, but um, we hope that this year, we hope that this year we'll be able to have more capacity to, to reach out to others and grow our network. Most of the relationships that we have with co-ops are local, uh, but hopefully we'll be able to connect with them and learn more from them. Can I ask a question? Well, I don't know if you want to take more oh. questions from the chat. No, do, ask, ask tu pregunta y después sigo con chat. Okay. Um, well, I just want to give a little bit of a, a picture of some of the interconnectedness with these co-ops. Um, I used to work for the Pioneer Valley Workers Center, and I also work with Just Words Co-op, which is a language justice co-op, which one of our interpreters today also works with. Um, and so we were also um, helped by the Pioneer Valley Workers Center to start our co-op. And we do a lot of interpreting for Riquezas del Campo. Um, and I just wanna illustrate the, the kind of dynamic between the co-op and the nonprofit aspect. Um, so as a co-op, you know, we can't directly take tax deductible donations, but the Workers Center can. And so sometimes we, write grants through the Workers' Center. So we've just recently written a grant through the Workers' Center that would fund us as the interpreter co-op to provide interpretation for Riquezas del Campo and other similar groups, right? Because they have um, English speaking and Spanish speaking members. So they frequently need interpreters for meetings. Um, and then similarly, I know, I think Lennon mentioned the mutual aid program. So the Worker Center as a nonprofit took, this was last year, um, raised a lot of funds to help folks who needed food. And instead of just going to the grocery store and buying food, which they also did, but when possible, I know that they would go to Riquezas and use that money to buy produce from Riquezas. And so that nonprofit aspect where they can take donations and grants is a really important piece of incubating these co-ops that we're all involved with. So I just wanted to point that out and um, highlight that because I think it's, I haven't thought of it this way, but it's a really nice um, relationship back and forth between co-ops, the co-op and the nonprofit and then another co-op and we can all kind of help each other. Gracias. Thank, Thank you, you. Um, hay otra pregunta. There's another question. Well, there's a, a number of comments. Thank you about, thank you for your work. Thank you for this presentation. There's a question about how people can support your farm. And if you have time, could you describe some of the photos that you were in your presentation? Of course. Before going to those questions, there's a bit more I wanted to mention um, to fill out what I wanted to share. Does that sound okay? Great. So the last thing I wanted to touch on was with respect to training. With respect to training, it's good to mention, as my colleague mentioned, that nonprofit organizations like the Worker Center and a number of other people and organizations have been essential to supporting Riquezas del Campo. It's, it, there are numerous workshops 
that Riqueza Cell has benefited from. Some to mention would be um, UMass. Sometimes we might feel alone, but really it's the opposite in terms of the support we're receiving. Also on finances, we had the fortune of getting important grants that have contributed to our learning and the functioning of our business. And worker owners are required to participate and learn in these workshops. And also all of us are required to learn some basic information about finances so that we have basic understanding of all the different aspects of the co-op. And a key grant made it possible for us to buy a tractor, tools for the tractor, a washing station, a moving cooler. It, uh, the grant allowed us to bring potable water to the field. And this alliance with the organization, the different organizations has made it possible for us to apply for these grants. And without having had these connections, it would have been very difficult to have access to the grant and to other forms of support. In the future, we'd like to work towards having organic certification for our vegetables. That's a dream that we have. And I don't know if some of you noticed, but Riqueza del Campo is constituted as an LLC, a limited liability corporation. And it's not a coincidence because the way that LLCs have a benefit, they have an advantage. An LLC has the advantage that it doesn't matter what um, the migration status is of the participants in the business. So that was the main reason, the key reason that we um, formed ourselves as an LLC. So if you're interested in being part of a cooperative um, or start a cooperative in the future, that's important to know about LLCs. So over to the questions now. So Ulum, do you mind repeating the question, please? How can people support you? I think that <clears throat> supporting cooperatives generally, <clears throat> supporting co-ops is a way to support these um, types of um, co-ops getting a foot up against the big companies, the big businesses that are using contract workers or that are just focused on um, making money. So you can support the cases directly or supporting other cooperatives. And uh, we're also very interested in supporting the community. We're very interested in having a high quality product. So I think that would be my, my response to that question. And lastly, if you want to describe a little bit the people in the photos or what's happening in the photos. So in this photo, this is from last season, our eggplant crop. There was quite a lot of water, but um, the eggplants did really well with the wet season. And this is our worker owner, um, Audi, who's showing the eggplant. Here, 
everyone in the picture, except for my daughter, is a worker owner. And this is a day where we were going to plant, but it had just rained and there was so much mud. So we weren't able to plant what we were planning on that day, but here we are. And for those who aren't that familiar with this part of Massachusetts, um, so where our, the star is, that's where we are in Massachusetts. We're about two hours, two and a half hours from Boston. If that's easier to visualize where Erika Sestelcampo is in Hatfield. And to the comrades who are there, these are the founding members. So these are some of the first families that planted when they weren't didn't even know yet that it would become a cooperative farm. And they started from nothing. This is what the land looked like before. Um, there was just straw being grown for cows or hay being grown for cows. So this is um, um, similar to the other photo, um, same day. You just see a little bit more um, what the place looks like. This is Audi's son and her husband in the background. And we want to give an opportunity to children to learn where vegetables come from. Often kids don't think about that. Incredibly. A lot of people think, well, yeah, a child, a child should be connected to the earth, should know about where our food comes from. One last comment in the chat from Elizabeth, who says, if your farm is interested in food justice certification, we have a social justice fund that would cover the cost of the certification, including technical assistance to make sure the co-op has all the needed policies for a health and safety plan, written worker policies and trainings. So I can also forward that information to you later. Of course, thanks so much for sharing that information. Really appreciate it. It's wonderful to be with you. And I hope that you've learned something new from us. And we um, invite you to try the vegetables from Riquezas del Campo. Great, I'll put in gallery mode. So if everyone could please turn on your camera, I'd love to take a photo of the whole group together. And also if there's more questions, we do have a few more minutes. But first I'd like to take a photo of everyone if we all turn on our cameras before we forget to do that. All right, let's all say cheese with bread. So it's queso con pan, queso con pan. I don't know if there's any other questions or comments, but, but I got the photo. So I want to give a big thanks to the colleagues, the comrades for the presentation. Also, thank you for to the interpreter colleagues, to Christina and Liana, applause to them. Any other questions, comments? Nothing?
So I have another question actually for Jose, and I think we have a question here from Cristina as well. Um, hi, I was just wondering um, when you're making decisions as a group, if um, you make those decisions um, unanimously, you know, um, or like by majority or how you decide to do that. Thanks. Te puede hacer la traducción, José, si necesitas o no. Gracias. Muy buena pregunta. Esperaba. Thank you. It's a really good question. Um, right now, Riquezas del Campo has benefited from the involvement of a lot of volunteers. There are regular volunteers are helping us with the farm work. And we have this firing worker owners and the worker owners. So we invite perspectives from everybody with the exception that in important decisions, only the worker owners can vote. But we always love to hear perspectives from different points of view. And many times that's helped us clarify things. On occasions, depending on what we're voting on, it's a matter that's extremely important, then we would really prefer to have unanimous support. But if we can't reach unanimous support, then we often seek advice from somebody with more experience with the topic or more information, and then we can get that additional information and advice, and then we can um, see if everyone's sure about their decision. But certain decisions have been on a majority basis. Fortunately, most often, we have a complete majority, uh, complete unanimous support or a near unanimous support for most of our decisions. And we're always, um, yeah, bringing in advice from outside support. I have a question, Jose. Being part of a capacity building organization and a, um, uh, organization that's supporting worker own, um, farm workers and becoming worker owners, how, how do you think that we could all support you more? And how could we have better communication so that you can um, achieve your dreams? And what are some of your objectives for this year? Thank you. Thank you, Alum. Before fully answering that question, I want to share. I was working for about 13 or 14 years as a farm worker until one day I went to a workshop offered by the Pony Valley Worker Center at the farm where I was employed. And I was really interested. I really wanted to learn more. I really loved the um, learning from that workshop. And I got invited to join their worker committee meetings. So then one of the really important campaigns that would helps a wide variety of immigrants and especially farm workers would be the legalization of driver's licenses for undocumented people. So that is something that would really help a lot of farm workers and restaurant workers, um, um, help a lot of people in our state who don't have driver licenses. We know our state is democratic, but we really haven't been seeing a lot of results um, on this issue. So, and we haven't won the fight yet on this aspect of driver's licenses. So that's one way that you can support us and that is through connecting with organizations like the Pioneer Valley Worker Center that are continuously um, leading campaigns like this. 
that benefit our communities, that benefit not only immigrants, but that benefit also um, citizens. And we're always looking for support. Um, this is hard work and it takes a lot of, a lot of effort. And also, even if you're a citizen and you speak English and you live here, there's also um, different challenges you may be facing. So, so this is um, one, a great way to support us is supporting this campaign. What was the other question, Ulum? Which was the other question, Ulum? What plans do you have for this year? Like I was mentioning, last year was instrumental for Riqueza del Capo. During six months, we had uh, we got a scholarship, um, state scholarship, and we had to execute and implement the infrastructure pro uh, projects. And so now we would like to um, have recruit more um, worker owners and trade with with training and education, so that. And we would like to recruit people so that they can experience what the farm feels like and what it can do for them. Um, and, and we would like to connect with uh, sister organizations. Uh, I think we're going to be very productive this year. Thank you. Si tú sabes cómo está, por dónde va el el bill de. Do you know where the uh, undocumented driver's license bill? Uh, what the status of that is? Uh, maybe Lenin can help us with that question. The the driver's bill um, is like in limbo. There's no real results right now. But my comrades who work in the workers' center, they're still going to be pushing for the driver's licenses and uh, pushing so that it gets passed to Massachusetts. Um, the driver's licenses are just really important for um, people who don't have documents in this country so that they can drive without fear. It's a great limitation that immigrants have. Not having the driver's license um, uh, just limits them not being able to drive freely just to, to go about their daily needs and activities, but also for all would, would support and help all the field and, and farm workers who are constantly having to ask for rides to different farms. And yeah, we, we hope that we continue organizing and getting together. just to garner the support from the community because big changes like this are made with 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 the support of the community so there is a significant change i don't have anything to add right now i am my my comrades are working on that in the worker center. There are many um, statements or posts on the chat about the driver's licenses. Um, there is another question. 
Do you know what the uh, um, any challenges to pay taxes on an LLC? Are the worker owners paying for the taxes individually, or does the LLC as a business and as a company pay the taxes? So, so as an LLC, each one of the individual members has to pay for the taxes. Whether it's through a social security number or an ITIN number. Um, and uh, it's done in a way that so that people don't have to be double taxed. Um, at the end of the fiscal year, the the capital gains are distributed and the individual uh, worker member pays on those gains, pays taxes on those gains. Uh, however, if, if they might they might decide to reinvest, uh, they might decide to reinvest into the co-op. So, Yes, there's a system so that it's not double tax. They're not double taxed. There's a lot of support for the driver's licenses. Um, Marty, comrade, uh, who is a director of policy. Um, he's always writing letters in support, but if there are other ways of supporting, please let us know. Thank you. Thank you for presenting and having the courage to present.